welcome to Praiseathon 2013. As together we answer the call. Somebody shout, he's a miracle man. There's a miracle getting ready to happen to everyone that is viewing. Everyone in this vast auditorium, if you don't mind, would you stand in agreement to believe that in the next few moments, there's a miracle going to happen all over the world. Thank God for Paul and Jan Crouch. Somebody give it up for the leaders of the visionaries of TBN. Thank you so much, man. Thank you so much. Thank you for the platform that we can pray for the world. Ladies and gentlemen, everyone that is here in this incredible All Nations Church, you are very important. 1,000 years ago, God saw you sitting, standing right where you are tonight. There was no building here. There was no lights. There was no chairs. There was no signal coming out of this place where we are. But God predestined and said there would be a people. There would be a building. There would be a visionary. Give me a moment because all of you are so precious here. You're important. But you that are watching me at home, listen to this very closely. Because what is about to happen in the next few moments, I believe, is going to be a connection that God is going to do something special in your life. All of you are very important in here, and I'm going to ask, I'm just going to, I don't know the directions of this auditorium, so I'm going to point to you. So please don't be offended when I stretch my hand to the balcony and to the the uh, stadium seating here to this side of this huge auditorium, several thousand seated. All of you, I want you to shout children. children. In the next few moments, I'm going to believe that your children, you that are watching me and you in this auditorium, God is going to give back to you double what the devil has stolen from your children. I want all of you to shout healing on the main floor. Yeah. Just wave your hand so the world can hear you and see you. Shout healing. Yeah. This side of the auditorium, this huge great auditorium over here on this side, I want you to shout finances. Everybody that is watching me and listening to me, tonight my word that I see and sense and feel so strong and I'm going into hell. Somebody help me go into hell. Because we're going to pull some people out tonight. Whether the devil likes it or not. Three things are going to happen. God is going to turn your finances around. Your children are going to be touched. And you're about to be healed in your body. Can I get this auditorium to believe God with those that are watching right now? I want to do something else. Everybody standing, you're a participant in what's happening worldwide. Think about the fact that the last 60, 70 years, God has allowed us to have technology, a television. Jan and Paul Crouch, the leaders of the largest footprint of the voice of the gospel of Jesus Christ going around the world. You all are a part of it. Now, I know Jan and Paul are going to, and Matt and Laura and the family, they're going to get a reward. I thank God for them. Nobody knows what they go through to get here. Usually when I look at people that have done great things for God, I said, I wish I could be like them. Now I know I say different. What did they have to go through to get what they got? But Jan and Paul Crouch would say this. They would agree with me that all of you are going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And every seed you planted, every prayer, every, every time you prayed on live television will affect all of the nations we're reaching tonight. Somebody's behind that camera on watching television right now. And there's a mother saying, if I could just believe that God would touch my children. There's somebody in the, on the couch saying, oh God, you'll touch my body. I can get up and, and live with health again. And there's somebody watching that says, God, I need you to touch my finances. So I have come to declare right now in the next few moments that Satan is about to give you double back everything he has stolen 
But the, can I get somebody to agree? You may be senior. Let's go to work on this situation. I need you all to be as attentive as you can. I'll probably have you stand in sections to believe God for those that are watching me. I want to say to every one of you that are watching that God, God has brought this word especially for you. The altar. The altar. Everybody shout the altar. The altar. If I could say that TBN is no more than just an altar. The whole network, this auditorium, Holy Land experience, it's an altar. Why do you say that, Steve? Because the Bible says, if you will build me an altar, I will meet you there, I will bless you there, and I will give you my name there. That's what Holy Land Experience is about, for people to come. It's a place in which we do productions and actors act and do the stories of Christ and the Lord's Supper and the Passion Play and the death, burial, and the resurrection. This network preaches Jesus Christ and Him crucified, but He's alive forevermore. Thank you, Jesus. And the fact is... The fact is, it is an altar because where God is, he is always near the altar. If you will build me an altar, I will meet you there, I will bless you there, and I will give you my name there. In the next few moments, I sense that God is about to do something so great for your children. My faith is activated. Do I have anybody else over here that believes that? My faith is activated to believe that God is about to touch you in your body. Do I have anybody on the main floor that will believe that? And that God is about to touch you in your finances. God is about to do something incredible in your finances. Satan showed up and he, he broke into the meeting where the sons of God were. The great invitation and God and his celestial, huge, gigantic, unbelievable auditorium in the heavenlies that no man can give size to. 6D, 7D, 12D effects and lasers and lights like we have never experienced. And God moves in and has a meeting with all of the cherubims and all of the angels and all of the cherubims. And you could feel the wind of the, of the angels' wings as they are flapping, waiting upon the audience of God. Because there has been a private invitation that all angels must meet God at a certain point at a certain time. Michael walks up to God and says, God, God, we have someone who used to be the music director and the performing arts of heaven. He's in the back. He is the one in which he took a third of the heavens. You called him son of the morning and Lucifer. He has broke rank and has stolen an invitation and has invited himself to this meeting. Now you got to know that God is not intimidated. God's not worried. He probably looked at Michael and winked at him and said, oh, yeah, I, yeah, that's right. He, we did kick him out of heaven. He is renting planet Earth, and I'm still the landlord, but his next home is hell. I have created that for him. What shall we do? Shall we tell him to leave and cast him out again? And, and God said, no, I'd like to have an audience with him. I'm wondering, I'm wondering what he's been doing. So you read in Job, there's an audience with Satan and God. God then begins to brag about his saints. One of them is Job. He begins to tell Lucifer who comes up. All the angels of the heaven are looking on. Michael is stroking a chain. If there's any red face in an angel, if there is any temper within the temperance of an emotional angel, you would see that out of Michael, anxiously waiting for the call of God to just strike Michael with just, just an action to say, Bind him and put him in hell. The audacity that he would even have the nerve to come in here after we have already fired him from heaven. Satan stands before God and God says, where you been? What you been doing? And, and Satan smiles and says, I've been visiting the TBN partners. I've been going to their house and I've got news for you, God. The people that are watching TBN and all of those that, that are partners and they really like what you're doing. And I know it's a big deal to you, God, that you're using Paul and Jan to preach the gospel on that signal. And you really think you're something, God, that you're taking into my territory and, and you're, you're actually taking people from me. But I'm not done. 
I'm still on planet earth. You still have not. You still have not kicked me out of the earth. I'm not done. I'm going to do much damage to your kingdom. And you must understand that God is not a race car driver. He's not in a race. He's not competing with the devil. He's calm on his throne because he knows the end and what's going to happen. I've come to tell somebody God's getting ready to put an end to what the devil is doing to your children. I'm telling you, God's getting ready to put an end to what he's doing to your body. God is getting ready to put an end to what he's, going to, what he's been doing to your finances. Satan then discusses, then discusses and says to, says to God, I'm going to tell you, God, I've been observing. and I know you've got people who believe in you and they want to see people get saved. And then God brings up Job's name. He says, Job, he, he says, you know my servant Job. He said, yeah, I, I know the guy. The guy's got an altar. Every morning he goes out and puts an offering on the altar for his children, for his life, for his finances. You've made him very rich, God. God smiles and says, he has lots of integrity. He has lots of integrity. Satan says, yeah, if you just let me have a few moments with him, I can get him to curse you. I can get him to quit church, quit picking up the phone and making a pledge that the gospel could go around the world. If you just give me a few moments, let me have a few moments with him, God. God says with a smile, looking over at Michael possibly and then looking back at Lucifer, son of the morning, who's very attractive, who's very handsome. If he walked in here tonight, you would all be shocked. He doesn't have horns. He's not dressed in black. He's the son of the morning. You've never heard anybody sing like Lucifer. You've never heard anybody that can do music like Lucifer. That's the reason why the whole world, the whole world, he directs with his music except for the kingdom music. He directs lighting. He has the ability to do all of that. And so God looks at him and says, I tell you what, Lucifer, I don't think that you can distract Job, nor can you separate him from me. And Satan says, if you just let me just put a little pressure on him, let him go through some stuff, I can get him to curse you. God smiles and laughs and says, I doubt if he can do that. He's got lots of integrity. The Bible says that Lucifer leaves that meeting and heads for Job's estate. He's a very wealthy man. The Bible said the greatest man in the east. This don't mean a lot to you. This is going to sound like a zoo. He has 3,000 camels. He has 7,000 sheep. He has 500 yoke oxen. He has 500 donkeys. Now, you and I, that's nothing but a farm or nothing but a zoo. Let me break it down for you. The 3,000 camels represent 3,000 semi-trucks. The 500 yoke represents tractors that cultivate miles of land. The 500 donkeys are combines that pick and take in the harvest. The 7,000 sheep is Gucci. <laughs> Dolce Gabbana. I'm sorry, Walmart. <laughs> J.C. Penney's. The clothing factories that he has instituted with 7,000 sheep. He has seven sons and three daughters. They all have their own estates, and they are in business with Job. Every single morning, he goes out to the altar because he knows that the altar is the place where God meets you and blesses you and gives your name, gives his name to you. Every morning, he does that. The Bible says in a matter of, you can count it off now, I'm not going to get into the minutes, but I believe in about 30 minutes, if you'll read the scriptures, the collapse came. The Bible says that Job is in that morning in which the Sibians, some terrorists came and they took his tractors and took his donkeys. That means his whole agricultural department and he kills the drivers and he kills the employees and they're destroyed. The Bible says a fire comes out of the heavens and it consumes all of the sheep, which is all the clothing, the factories, and all of the employees. The Bible says a Sibian, one of the Sibians kill the drivers and, and kill the employees. And one escapes and comes to Job's house, right? I see him past the altar. He gets right past the altar and falls to his knees. He's bleeding and 
And Job says, what's wrong? What happened? And he explains, they have killed all the employees. They have taken all the tractors. They have taken all the combines. Right after that, the Bible said, while he yet spake, another one came. And the Bible says, the Bible says that, that he, he's on fire because he has been burnt by fire. And all the shepherds that were taking care of the 7,000 sheep are now destroyed by fire. And a man who is on fire, his clothing, you can see the smoke that is coming from the garments. You see his face torn and ripped by the heat and the degrees of burns. And he talks to Job falling on his knees next to the man who has just told him about the oxen and the donkey. And he said, sir, the sheep, all of them, have been destroyed by fire. And while he yet spake, the Bible said a Chaldean came who came and said they have killed 3,000 camel drivers and they have taken all of the equipment and they have taken all the camels. That means that Job was bankrupt less than 30 minutes and Satan is dancing, looking at God in the heavens and said any minute now, I will get him to curse. I will get him discouraged. I will get him to not have integrity. I will get him separated. The Bible says that the Bible says it wasn't over then. Here comes the chief butler from his oldest boy's home. Let us go back in just a few seconds or a few moments earlier that morning before all this broke out. His oldest son had come by and said, Daddy, we're having a family reunion, a Thanksgiving meal. We want you to come, all the family, the seven sons and three daughters and grandchildren. Everybody's going to be there. Now the butler comes after, after Job has said to his oldest son, I can't, I can't, I can't come, son, today. And he gives the excuse. Job gives the excuse. The reason why I can't come is because I'm going to stay by the altar. And I'm going to plant my offering on the altar. Because if I plant my offering on the altar, God will meet me here. God will bless me here. And God will give me his name here. And son, I can do more at this altar than I can at the reunion. A butler now comes in the afternoon. His arm is broken. He's bleeding severely. Three men are dying in his front lawn in front of his estate. The fourth one comes and barely makes it and falls on his knees and says, Sir, and Job knows what this means. This man comes from his oldest boy's house. He then tells him, Sir, a whirlwind came in. And Sir, all seven of your daughters, or excuse me, sons, and three of your daughters and all your grandchildren, they are dead. Job breaks into a run like any normal person, like Mother Jan, Dr. Crouch, any parent, breaks into a run and heads for ground zero. Begins to move into the ashes, trying to find some evidence of their children, reaching in, trying their best to pull them out of the ashes, to bury them, fingernails full of dirt, bloodshot eyes from crying, his wife is screaming hysterically and Satan is dancing saying, I tell you God, I will break him. I will tell you, not only am I going to touch all of his children and his money and his estate, but I will put boils from the top of his head to the soles of his feet until he has to sit into the ashes and take pottery broken pieces so he can pick the heads of the boils off of his body. And I will get him to curse you. I will get him. I will get him in a position that he will separate himself. I don't know how long it took for him to kiss those babies and to wipe the blood. And to take the burnt bodies and to put them into the ground. I see him staggering back. His wife is already committed to the ways of the enemy. And she is already screaming, curse God and die. Don't you dare go to that altar. But Job is making his way back. I'm talking to somebody, the devil has attacked you. But we have come to TBN tonight to declare we're going to get it all back in the name of Jesus. I'm talking to a mother whose son is in a gang. I'm talking to a mother who has a daughter that's on drugs. I'm talking to somebody that doctor said you're not going to live long. I'm talking to somebody you lost your job and you went bankrupt in foreclosures and you need money. But I'm here to declare I have come to, to shout the word of the Lord on a signal that's going around the world. It is not over until it is over. Everybody over here shout children. Everybody down here shout healing. 
Everybody over here shall finances. Job moves into his house. His wife is holding on to his garments. His eyes are bloodshot. His fingernails are full of dirt. He's exhausted from digging graves. And he has nothing. He is broke. And he has nothing left. And Satan is laughing, saying, I will break him. Many people think that Job was attacked by Satan to take all of his stuff away. But there's another revelation you need to understand. Satan did not want him to put an offering on that altar. And if he could take his money, he knew what money does when you put on an altar. It rises up a standard. It opens up the windows of heaven. It's a weapon in God's hand to rebuke the devourer. I need three people to shout hallelujah because there's a miracle going to happen right where you are. Where are you going, Job? The Bible says he goes in and gets a knife. She's holding on for dear life. Curse God. Love you, baby. No, curse God. He takes the knife. Oh, oh, you take that knife, you're going to kill yourself. Uh, Job, here's what you do. You kill me first. Put the knife near my heart so I start bleeding. I want to live long enough to watch you kill yourself. And, Eva, and together on our knees, we will curse God and we will die. Job moves her quietly aside. Moves over to the altar outside his house. Takes the locks of his hair. Begins to cut the hair off of his head. Puts it on the altar and rips his garments open. Falls on his knees. Naked I came in. Naked I will go out. But I will let nothing separate me from the love of God. Three of his friends came over and said, here we got seven. We got seven sheep. So you could start over again, Job. We have seven bullocks. You could start the farm again, Job. It's little, but start the farm. Job had not been able to give one offering since the time Satan had broke him. He looked at them and said, thank you very much. He reached out for the first sheep, and they looked at him and said, what are you doing? He slit its throat, went over to the altar. He put it on the altar. He got the second one. He put it on the altar. He got the, wait a minute. You got to invest. You got to stop. You're not going to be able to pay your bills. But Job knew if he could put the offering on the altar, God would give him back everything the devil stole from him. Okay, can, can I borrow your chair? You'll have to stand for about three minutes. Then I'm going to pray. Great actor here. He's a great actor. Been with us, been with Jam for a long time. God will just sit and and he took the seventh sheep and put it on the altar. Then he grabbed those bullocks, put on the altar. And he fell down and he said, Oh God, I put the offering, the peace offerings upon the altar. Because when you give an offering. It don't come from your wallet, your checkbook, or the bank. It comes from your heart. For where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. And God don't trust anybody just with an amen and a hallelujah and a lifting up your hand. Anybody can do that. But when somebody reaches down in their heart, they're pulling out faith to put up on the altar. When he did that last moment of the offering, God stood up. Looked across the galaxies of what he had created. Pointed his finger at Lucifer and said, it's over. You give back to Job double everything you have stolen from him. Start praying in here, everybody. Everybody, everybody start praying. All of you for finding start praying. Something's going to happen right now. I'm getting ready to release the older invitation. You that are watching me right now, God didn't speak to me and say, 
Steve, you tell them to do this. I just feel inspired that Job gave seven sheep, seven bullocks upon the altar. I sense that everyone that is watching me, and when I, when I count, I'm going to do a countdown of ten because I want God. Uh, just excuse my faith, please. Please excuse my faith. But the moment that phone starts ringing and people start bringing their offerings to the altar, God's going to give up. He's going to walk right to your house. He's going to demand that Satan give you your health back, give you your children back, give you your money back. Pray all over this audience. You pray for children. You pray for healing. You pray. Here we go. I need every person that's watching me. I want you to go to that phone and I want you to give $77. I want you to give $77 for the next 10 months. I want you to do it by faith. You give the first one, the next one will come. And the moment you pick up that phone, you're making a connection to the altar. Yes, it will be one of our, it will be somebody who will pray and somebody who will take your offering. But it's going on the altar because Paul and Jan, they believe in the altar. They believe in putting it on the altar. And the moment you go to your phone, I promise you, there's going to be a wave of the Spirit of God that's going to surround your living room, surround your bedroom, surround wherever you are. And I don't care if your kids are on drugs, your kids are messed up. I don't care if God's getting ready to do a turnaround in your children. I know that he didn't give him back his children, but he gave him seven more sons, three more daughters. Here's the best part. When God said, when Job must have said to God, why don't you give me 14 sons and give me six daughters? God said, oh no, you got double. Because these that you lost, you thought you lost, they're in heaven doing fine. I'm just going to double up on earth. Get ready now. In the name of Jesus. I want you to go to the phone and say, I'm going to put on the altar just like Job. When I count down 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, I want everybody in this audience to get an agreement because God's about to do something in your finances. God is about to do something in your body. God is about to do something in your family's life. Are you ready, everybody? Are you ready? I want you to go $77 for the next 10 months. You say, how can I do this? You give the first one. God will make sure you got the next one the next 30 days. And then God is going to give you more than enough. For he is a God of plenty. Are you ready, everybody? There's a Holy Spirit moving right now through the camera. Stand to your feet, everybody, in the auditorium. Count down with me. 10, 8, 7, 6. Five, four, go, three, go to the phone, two, one. Wait, wait, there they go, 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 there they go. You're coming to the altar, that's it. Pick up the phone, they're coming to the altar, that's it. Go to the phone, that's it, there they go, there they go, there they go. Somebody clap your hand, there they go, there they go. There they go. There they go. There the devil, you're in big trouble. There they go. There they go. There they go. Woo! 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 Somebody shout hallelujah. There they go. There they go. There they go. There they go! 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 Something's fixing to happen! Go, 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 go! That's it! Something's fixing to happen! Something, somebody shout hallelujah! There they go! There they go. It's going down to zero. It's going to go down to zero. In the name of Jesus, your children, your money, your health. God is getting ready to set them free. In the name of Jesus, somebody get ready to shout hallelujah. Come on. Somebody shout hallelujah. 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 Keep going to the phone.